So year nines, we're carrying on with the work on travel blogs. And this is going to be our last lesson before a two week break for the Easter holiday. I'm not going to be posting any um, formal lessons for you to do over Easter. Make sure you have a, a decent break. But I probably will put some things on there just to help you. So maybe some um, activities to do with punctuation or grammar that you can refer to anytime um, if you're unsure about when to use various things. So this will be the last formal lesson before Easter and then we'll come back in two weeks time. So as I said, carrying on with travel blogs and our lesson objective for today to be able to write in an informal formal style and using descriptive detail to make accounts vivid for the reader. So last lesson you copied down these features of writing a travel blog when you looked at those other travel blogs and tried to pick out some of those features. So you should have those written down. If you haven't got them written down, write them down now because you're going to be doing a piece of your own travel writing where you're going to be using as many of those 10 features as you can. So the activity we're doing, I want you to think about a holiday or a trip that you've been on. Um, doesn't need to be anywhere really fancy. It could be um, a trip to, to Drayton Manor or somewhere like that or Twycross Zoo um, or to a farm park. It doesn't have to be a holiday abroad. And you need to describe the place in the style of a travel blog. You're going to write about the experiences that you had and include facts to inform the reader and also descriptions of the place to create a clear picture in the reader's mind. Use the travel blogs that you've studied to help you. So they're the ones that we looked at last lesson. If you can't remember all of the details, make them up. It really doesn't matter if you, if you uh, describe things that actually didn't really happen or weren't really there. It's just practice at writing a travel blog. You should be able to write at least two paragraphs. So you could start off with, I remember when I went to. Now, before you get started, we're going to have a look at a couple of examples and I want you to just make sure you're focusing on the following things. So for secure then, make sure we're using common punctuation accurately, including commas. Make sure you're organising your writing into paragraphs. It will not be secure if you don't use paragraphs. Can you use your imagination to write in more interesting detail? If we're focusing on moving up towards exceeding, which you all should be trying to push yourself and challenge yourself, can you use punctuation accurately and try using semicolons? Have a go at using them. Can you make sure that your writing is organised and linked so that it flows properly? Can you make sure that your sentences are varied and have a certain effect on the reader? If we focus on those two pathways that we've just looked at, secure and exceeding, I would like you to have a read through this example and see what you think, secure or exceeding and why. I remember when I went to Rome, we had a great time. The most amazing place that I visited was St Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. St Peter's Basilica is the largest of any Christian church in the world. It's regarded as one of the holiest Catholic sites. The interior is huge compared with other churches and it's quite amazing to walk inside to stand still and look around yourself and be completely blown away by everything that you see. So what do you think? Secure or exceeding? Well, we've only got basic punctuation in there. We've got full stops. Um, we've got an apostrophe in St Peter's. That's all the punctuation that we've got. It's written just one paragraph because it's just the opening paragraph of this piece of writing. It's got some interesting detail in there and it's got some facts. So hopefully you're looking at that one and thinking that would be secure. Let's look at this one now. Secure or exceeding and why? I remember when I went to Rome. I was surrounded by hundreds of places to visit, each with its own history and I was eager to see everything. Without a doubt, the most amazing place that I visited was St Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. It is regarded as one of the holiest Catholic sites and has the largest interior of any Christian church in the world. The interior is of vast dimensions by comparison with other churches. It's quite overwhelming to walk inside, to stand still and look around yourself and be completely blown away by everything that you see. So what are we thinking here? Secure or exceeding and why? 
Well, obviously, we've got a lot more punctuation in there. We've got the ellipsis on that first line. We've got an exclamation mark on the third line. A um, little bit further down towards the end, we've got the semicolon after in comparison with other churches. So certainly the punctuation's a lot better. We've got lots more detail in there. So I think that one is certainly a step up from the last piece and would be an exceeding rather than a secure piece of writing. So I'd like you to have a go now at writing your own travel blog. Like I say, it doesn't have to be anywhere fancy that you've been to. It could even be a trip to the supermarket or a trip shopping, something like that. Think about somewhere that you've been and you're writing a travel blog about it. Now, when you've written your first draft of it, I want us to then see how we can edit and improve. So firstly, check it against the list. Have you included all of the features? So go back to that list of 10 features of travel blogs that we wrote down. Or if you need to rewind, have a look on this a little bit further back. Have a look at how many of those features you've used. Does it actually make sense? Quite often when you do a piece of writing, your first draft, when you look back through it, you might have missed words out. Things might not make sense. You might have repeated yourself over and over. So check that it does actually make sense. Check your punctuation. Have you used capital letters for I and at the beginning of all names? So place names, building names, make sure we're using capital letters for them. Think about whether you've pushed yourself with your punctuation. Have you had a go at using ellipsis with semicolons, with exclamation marks if something's a bit shocking or surprising or you're passionate about it? Have you checked your spellings? Have you written in paragraphs? Final bit is to then make a best copy of your travel blog and then label the features on it like you did with the printed travel blog. So think about underlining all of the different features of travel blogs on your work. Write them in the margin or at the side. You could highlight them in different colours if you want to and do a little key. And that's what we're aiming to do, making sure we've got as many of those 10 features of writing a travel blog within your piece of writing. OK, as always, if you want to send me the work for me to have a look at, that would be fantastic. Have a fab Easter. Off you go.